Hello everyone and welcome to Peoples Online. Our goal here is to just inspire you and encourage you in your walk of faith. We want to invite you to come join us on Sunday mornings for our amazing services at 9.30 a.m. and at 11.15 a.m. Now, if you stay tuned in right to the end of this video, we will have some ways for you to connect with us. Thank you so much for watching today's message and we hope that you enjoy it. Excited just to chat a little bit more today about who we are, where we're going, what's coming next. And uh, was uh, anyone not here last Sunday? Can you just give me a little show of hands? Oh, oh, see, see, that's important to know. Okay, so I'm going to do a little quick recap of last week just to get everybody up to speed because these things all play together. So last Sunday. I'm really, I'm going to try to say what I said in like 45 minutes in about two minutes, so this, is going to, this a miracle is about to happen, okay? But uh, basically last Sunday, we, we uh, were just telling and just informing everybody that uh, our district office, a number of months ago, back in April, actually approached us about this idea of us taking over the leadership of one of our uh, sister PAOC churches here in the city. And uh, that church is down on Cumberland Avenue, and so that's a, a Cumberland Christian Assembly. And um, so this started a whole bunch of meetings, all right, and uh, meetings with the district, meeting with the leadership of Cumberland, but also us leading as our staff and our board and several of us going down there for a number of meetings and just really thinking this through, talking about it, and, and really at the end of all of it, we've just really, really sensed that this is a God open door that God has put before us, and uh, we are wanting to walk through it as a church. And so, starting in the new year, at the beginning of the new year, we're going to be doing a, a, a little bit of a renovation down there, a cosmetic renovation to the facility. And then, you know, late February, early March, we're going to be launching a second site. So it's going to be People's Downtown. And we're going to have People's Mountain, okay? And so this is this exciting news. And, uh, you know, over the next couple months, we're going to be just working, just creating the teams of volunteers and leaders that are going to help us to do that. And so please, over these next couple weeks, we're going to lay that out. And uh, just to keep everybody informed, and we want, you know what, you can be praying and thinking about it. That if God wants you to be there, because I've already had people tell me that, they're like, I just feel like God is sending me there. And so, I, you know what? We want to just totally embrace that, okay? Because we need people to go, okay? And uh, we're going to be one church, two sites, okay? And these are exciting times. So this is, but all that to say, this is only part of the things we want to talk about because we just know that God has been leading us and guiding us and there's things ahead for us and this is part of it. But there's also, there's more. And, you know, when I think about who we are as a church, really it's just, I can almost break it down to just two things. Is that I believe that we're a spirit-filled community of faith, okay? We, we love to worship God. We love to experience God's power and his presence. And, you know, that is just who we are. And we believe that we operate and we function by the spirit of God. So this is who we are. But also, a huge part of who we are as a church is that we are in our community and we're trying to reach our community. We're a community-focused church, both the community in the church but outside of the church. And so these two things are really, really key and important to us. Now, also when we look at who we are as a church, we realize that the majority of the people that, you know, come to our church and especially that come, that are sort of in the circle of our ministries, whether that's the daycare or our sports league or our Wednesday night programming for kids or youth and all the different programs that we, we definitely put a lot of, you know, emphasis on, the majority of the, the people that are involved in that are in close proximity to us. They're within a couple, you know, probably a kilometer, even two kilometers of us to the church. And that, that totally makes sense. I hope everybody understands that. We're reaching our Jerusalem, right? Our area of the city. And we, we know, and even as we're saying, to do you know, similar ministry, we, we believe that we will go into other places in the city. But also one of the major things is that we realize this is our main hub, okay? 
And this area is an area that we're committed to. And, you know, we don't see ourselves moving away from this area because we're already invested and we love this part of the city. Okay? So, why is this so significant? Well, because as we're growing, and, you know, I highlight, highlighted that last week, that, you know, basically from around 2005 until now, last, you know, 12, 13 years, we went from around 200 people to, like, last Sunday, there was 750-some here on Sunday. I'm sure today there might even be more than that. And uh, God has really blessed us with growth. And all along that process, there have been lots of seasons of change. And, you know, and even you know, facility changes. We, I honestly, I've been here on staff for 19 years, and I feel like we've been renovating for all of them, okay? We have been, and, and I actually, you know what? I'm not at all, it's 110% okay. As long as we're renovating for growth, we'll renovate till we die, okay? We'll add until we're done, until God calls us home. We wanna be growing, we don't think that we're done, we actually believe we're just getting started, okay? And, and so what's significant, you know, a number of years ago, it, it, I can't even believe I can say that because it just seems like yesterday we were doing the parking lot. But in October, it's going to be two years since we've been done the parking lot, okay? Time goes by quickly, okay? Before you know it, things get, they do, they get away on you. And so we got we to gotta stay on this, okay? And... Uh, when we did the parking lot, the parking lot wasn't just to do something to stand alone. It was actually to help prepare us for today. We knew, so when we did our parking lot, we went from around 120 spots to 250, okay, parking spaces. And it wasn't just to have nice parking, okay? It was so that we could facilitate growth. We knew we needed to do that. So if, you know, if you're newer to the church, you don't remember when you had to park in the skating rink down below or when you had to park in the muddy pit, you know, when it was spring, and, like, it was crazy. I literally, we shot a video. I went down and skated in the bottom parking lot. Not because we watered it. I literally just went down on a day and played hockey and went, you know, we wanted to have a versatile parking lot. This wasn't exactly what we were talking about. But, you know, we're glad for the changes that have been made, but it wasn't just to have a great parking lot. It was to set up that, we can, can, can continue to grow as a church. And so in a moment, Willie's going to just walk us through. We, we want to present to everybody and just keep this before everybody that we want to expand our building to its, uh, like the maximum potential of the facility. Because we're a church that does. We're constantly bringing people into this place. This isn't a church, we aren't a church that only meets on Sunday, okay? This place barely ever sleeps. If you only come on Sunday, you're only seeing a slight snapshot of who we are as a church. Almost every night of the week, you know, our gym is being used, rooms are being used. Several days of the week, ministry is happening here. Every Tuesday, Tuesday morning, if you come here on a Tuesday morning, you can almost have a hard time to find a place to park on a Tuesday morning. Well, why is that? Because we have a large ladies' Bible study that meets, men's Bible study that meets. Also, we have staff. We have the daycare and, you know, all the stuff that happens with families bringing kids and, and the staff of the daycare. And you can come here on a Tuesday and it almost looks like a Sunday morning in the parking lot. And it's because this is a place that's busy with ministry. And as we're looking ahead, we want that to continue. And so there are some changes that we want to make to our facility to maximize that. And so Willie's just going to walk us through the details of that. So, hey, can everyone welcome Willie? All right. Thank you, Pastor Tony. And I'm going to lay out some plans. They're going to affect generations to come, many, many years, and we're going to do it all in 10 minutes. And it's going to be good. All right, so I'm going to direct your attention to the screens. Uh, you're going to see a red dot that I'm going to use to help you, uh, that you can follow along with. So just starting with a high-level overview of our plans, and just to get your bearings here, this is our sanctuary. Everybody see the red dot up there? This is our sanctuary. As you walk out of our sanctuary, this is our lobby area. These are our washrooms here. This is the corridor that goes to the kids' area. You head this way to go into our gymnasium. 
this whole area here is our daycare wing, and this is our Blair room. All right. Everything that you see here in gray, this whole gray area, that is going to be new space or newly renovated space by the end of the project, which is about 30,000 square feet in total. This red line that just showed up there, that's the existing front of our building. Everything to the left of that is new space with a whole new exterior facade and signage, which I'm going to show you right now. Hmm. couple other views of it. And there's a whole strategy be behind the, the glass facade there that people can see in, because we want literally the tens of thousands of people that drive along Mohawk Road every single day to know that we exist as People's Church. We want them to be able to look inside, see all the amazing things that are happening. We want this to be a landmark in our community, a recognizable landmark. I've been told many, many times before, so where's your church? Oh, it's on Mohawk Road, close to Garth. Don't know where that is. Between Garth and Paradise. Nope, never seen it. People have driven by here for 10 years, don't even know people's church sits here, let alone a huge daycare, one of the biggest daycares in the city. People can drive by and not even know we exist with our current facade that we have there. And like Tony said, we don't just exist on Sundays. There's ministry happening all week, in the evenings, on Saturdays. There's more to come of that, and we want our city to see it as we utilize some of this new space for a whole bunch of ministry ideas we have, as well as outreach ideas. Okay, so as you move inside into this newly created space, you can see the red dot there. Here's the access to the second level lobby, which we're going to talk about shortly. As you move along here, there's more lobby space. There's a coffee area, expanded lobby here to the front doors. There's sitting space, there's this whole children's outreach play area, a toddler area, a parent's viewing area. And as we move inside the space, here's a look from what it looked like from this end, looking that way down the new atrium style, two stories high, open space. And then the next pick... <coughs> The next pick is going to be from the other end where you see those playgrounds looking back this way. The whole idea of this children's outreach play area is that we've seen other churches do this and we know they've been successful with it. We met with churches in Cambridge and Kitchener and talked to some down in the States as well. And they do these, they invite people in during the day and families come and in the evenings as well and they build relationships with them. It's another tool, just like our daycare and our, our sports league that we've talked about, our, our kids outreach on Wednesday nights, another tool to build bridges to our community, to meet with families and to build these relationships. And one of the churches, they've done a couple of church plants themselves and every time they do a church plant, they build one of these indoor play places with the church plant. That's how much they believe in this. There's all kinds of other ministries and strategies and stuff that we'll lay out over the next couple months um, that we can, but for today, this is what we'll concentrate on. Okay, moving back into our current space, some of the existing offices that we have right out through the foyer there are highlighted in blue, and we're gonna transform those and turn them into special needs rooms they call them snoozle rooms or snuggle rooms or comfort rooms. And when you go back to this shot here, you can see it, see it off there. That whole area is going to become special needs rooms. And it's really just to give parents respite. Parents who are here on Sundays, we know we have a lot of kids in our PC Kids program who have special needs. We have a lot of kids in our daycare with special needs. And we know there's a lot of families out there that we haven't met yet who have children with special needs and need, need a safe place to come, and we're going to provide that for them. You look for the cursor again. There's also going to be a lot of renovated and updated washrooms on the main level. We know our washrooms are old. We know our women's washroom needs a lot more of them, especially when we have uh, some big events. There's always a lineup for the women's washrooms. So we're going to expand our washrooms. For the guys, we planted a few more trees out back when we did the parking lot. <laughs> There's also going to be 
family washrooms in here, access, accessible from both sides. Um, we're going to update our foyer to match the whole new space out front. And in this back corner here, before you enter the gym, there's going to be a new elevator. Or not a new one, a elevator. We don't have an elevator. Yes. And that elevator is going to help our little daycare kids who are really small, one and a half, two years old, who are going upstairs, up and down stairs a lot. It's going to help our seniors, obviously our, those with a handicap, and some of our lazy people here. <laughs> <coughs> So as you move up to the second level and you get off the elevator, you're into a brand new space now that doesn't exist today. This whole upper level lobby, basically over our existing lobby. And then there's all this new space here. We have a Blair room over here that's one story. This is all new space on top of that Blair room. So I'm going to switch to a 3D view here so you can see that a little bit better. With the roof lifted off here. Now you can see this level a bit better. This whole new second level lobby with a coffee area here uh, that can be used for events, meetings, gatherings. Over the Blair Room, there's a new youth area and kids area. There's some more offices. There's a lot of more meeting spaces for our life groups. There's a, there's a daycare addition. Our daycare is full to capacity. Uh, we've expanded it pretty much as much as we can now. Uh, there's a connection now from our daycare wing to the daycare classrooms are on this side before they had to go down across and back up Now we have a second level connecting them all As you move towards the front of the lobby area There's another parents viewing area down into the kids play area and Very importantly you see these doors right here These are doors into a new second level of our sanctuary, which I'll show in a moment so again I just showed it now. So again, there's 30,000 square, <laughs> square feet of new space and newly renovated space. It's going to meet all our growing ministry needs that Tony was talking about. And then now, as you enter the second level from the new lobby space, you're going to be entering into our new balcony space. And basically, with this new design, we're going to take out these stairwells here so you can get more chairs down below. We're going to wrap the balcony around, we're going to raise the balcony up, go back a bit further, and it's going to go from 450 seats, which we have here today, to 750 seats. So it's an increase of 300 seats. Yeah. And it is, because we have been talking about, well, these services, first service was, was full, maybe more full than it is today, that maybe we need to go to a third service, and this is going to help facilitate that growth. Okay, so with 30,000 square feet of new space or newly renovated space, the whole church, basically the whole front of the church from the gym onwards is going to be a brand new facility. It's not only going to meet all our ministry needs we've been talking about and the stuff we want to do in the future, it's also going to be up to today's code and standards uh, in terms of electrical, heating, and cooling. We know this was designed 47 years ago. The church was built. We have electrical issues. We have heating and cooling issues. We have a bunch of maintenance we've been putting off. Our roof over our lobby, our roof over the Blair Room needs to be replaced anyways. Our big units that service this area are on their last legs. Our electrical needs some updating. So all those things would happen as part of this. Our duct work as well on the roofs are pretty much at their end of life. So just a quick recap of some of the things in there. We have a new exterior face and facade and signage. We've got a new kids outreach player. We've got special needs, sensory and comfort rooms. We've got a sanctuary that goes from 450 to 750 seats. A whole new second level lobby area with multi-purpose space. An elevator for accessibility. A new youth or kids room. A new daycare classroom. We've got renovated washrooms. We've got new washrooms in every Sunday school class. We've got new family washrooms. More meeting rooms for life groups. Additional office and storage space. 30,000 square feet, and all these things are going to help facilitate all our growing ministry needs and our outreach and whatever else God is laying on our hearts to reach people and families in this community as we continue to be a beacon in this community. Yes. So thank you. All right. Can we thank Willie? He's like, put that all together for us. You know, I, I didn't mention this in the first service, but really, I, I can't say, you know, 
quantify actually how much work Willie puts into all of these things not just to come and present it to us, but there's so much work that's going on behind the scenes to get ready, to meeting with the architects, to designing this, and it has been a ton of work, and we're still in the process, okay? And uh, we're, we're wanting to maximize, as I said, our facility so that we can do even greater things than we are right now. And today, I just want to tie a couple things together as we're just moving ahead, and you know, Today we've been promoting this idea that we're coming here today and we want people to sign up to volunteer. And we're having a, a volunteer expo. You know, that's probably a more um, current word when we use that word volunteer, okay? But if I could just shift a little bit, I just want to take a couple minutes and I want to talk about serving, okay? Because I really believe that's what volunteering is in our context, okay? And God is about serving and you know, this isn't just our idea. We really know that, you know, God wants us to be people who serve. And I'm going to unpack this just quickly for us today. But, you know, I, I, I just want to maybe act this out a little bit because I think it will just help us to sort of understand what serving can or, or can look like, can or cannot look like, okay? Now, I just want to just, if you can just come with me, and you know what, for some families, you have young kids, you're either going to be like, this is just going to be hard to watch, you're going to be emotional, because you'll be like, it's going to be my house tomorrow morning, but I just want to act out a typical day at my house, but literally, this happened this week, okay? Now, I have, you know, we have, we have two boys, and, and Michelle and I go to work at different times. Michelle goes to work, actually, really early in the morning, so Michelle, typically, she gets up in the morning, makes the boys lunches, packs all their bags, signs anything, you know, for, for school, just to make sure everything's prepared that way. She lays out their clothes, she gets all that stuff ready, and then, and she goes off to work, and then I get up, and I got to get the boys out of bed and get them dressed, and if you know, they need, you know, encourage them to shower, or help you to take a bath, you know, encourage them to brush their teeth. Who knew that was going to be, like, has anyone else, it's like, you almost like, it's a international crisis to get your children to brush their teeth. It's like an eight-step process. You have to start, you're like, okay, in 10 minutes, you're going to brush your teeth, just so you're forewarned, Okay. <laughs> And then you come back, okay, in five more minutes, there's going to be teeth brushing is going to happen in this house, okay? Phone, you know, whoever, international people, we need to let know. We don't want the, you know, we don't want the world to go down on this, you know. But anyways, I don't know about you guys, but it's like that in my house. And, and so literally this week, okay, um, it was on Tuesday. It was a little bit of a colder day. Remember earlier in the week, it was a bit colder and... And Michelle had messaged me, and she was like, hey, Tony, I laid the boys' clothes out, but I think, you know what, make sure the boys have pants on today, it's cool out, and, and tell them to take some, they should wear coats, right? And I'm like, okay, yeah, 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 I got it, you know, tip, yeah, I got it, I got it, right? I would have thought of that, like, what are you saying? Any, anyways, okay, but... So, you know, you're going through the whole process. I get up. I, I make the boys breakfast. I'm doing all that stuff. I'm making sure they're getting ready. I fight the brush your teeth war and all that. And, you know, in the midst, I, you know, I even wash myself and dress myself. Michelle doesn't have to lay out my clothes, even though she... <laughs> I probably would look better if she did. But, okay. But... Anyways, okay, you know, and you, you're doing the whole process, and then you're literally, you know, like that last couple minutes right before you go out the door is just intense, right? You're like, get that stuff. Make sure you got your book bag. Like, come on. Come on. We got to go. We're late. We're always late, right? You know, you're just like rushing that last, like, like, come on. Uh, you know, it's just like, how in the world? Any, anyways, anyways, so... Like literally, so at the like the last minute, this is pretty much the routine. It's just like right at the last minute at our house, it looks like this, okay? Because you know you haven't had enough time, and so like right like like honestly, about two minutes because I like to plan it this way because I don't want my cereal to go bad. I make myself breakfast, right? Okay, and it just looks like this. I just put it in. Okay, it's very extensive, right? You know, and you pour yourself. I usually check it just to make sure the date's good, right? You know. <laughs> Okay, and like literally because I eat breakfast, like if, if anyone gets in my vehicle, you will see 
you know, in the afternoon, I have a bowl and spoon that's empty because I eat breakfast on the way driving my kids to school every day. It's how it works. Okay, just it's part of the routine. It's where I squeeze it in. So, but literally, so we're trying to get out the door, and I'm saying to Judah, I'm like, Judah, go put on your shoes. You know, just get your shoes on. And, you know, he, these are actually his shoes this year, okay? These are legit. These are no one else's shoes. These are his shoes, and, of course, they're double knots that I tied, okay? And, you know, every day, because, you know, we transition now from, you know, the little Velcro ones. He's got shoes he's got to tie, and so every day is a struggle. The struggle's real, right? So I'm like, I'm like, Judah, get your shoes on. Go get your shoes on. And he's over at the door. He's fighting, and, and, and I'm literally like, okay, oh, yeah. Michelle told me to get, he's, he's got his pants on, so this, this is literally, this is my bag, my computer's in it, I put it on, right, and I'm like, I'm like, I got my coat, I remember, because I was like, it's cool out, this is literally my coat, okay, I got on one arm, and I'm literally, I'm trying, I'm like, I'm like, Judah, come on, get your shoes on, Jaden's already ready, okay, he's a little bit older, and, and, uh, and, I, and I'm literally, I'm like, oh yeah, I got to get Judah a coat. And I literally, I remember I'm running back to his room. And I mean, in the midst of this, I'm trying to deal with our dog too. Because like we have a dog and the dog has a pen that it's got to go in. And I'm like, get Riley in the pen, okay? And you know, and I remember I, I'm literally, I'm coming out of Judah's room and I got a coat, I got a coat. And, and I can't tell you how many times I've literally driven all the way to school. And you know, you're at the last minute, you're never early. And that last minute, we're like, literally, the boys are getting out of the truck, and Judah's like, Daddy, didn't you bring my bag? <laughs> so I know I'm probably enabling, but I literally, I'm like, I'm bringing his bag, okay? <laughs> so I'm like, Judah, get your shoes on, get your shoes on. And just how it goes, it's just like this. I got to keep my keys in my hands, because when I get to the car, I got to be able to put them I got to be able to get them in there, and I'm a water drinker. I take one every day. I got my cell phone. I stick it in my pocket, and I, you see, this is the Tony Tiger. I got it from my sister-in-law, like literally, like 15 years ago. I still got it, Tony. We're going out the door, right? <laughs> okay. This is, this is not made up. This is for real. This is Tuesday morning at my house, okay? I'm going out the door, though, and for like the last five minutes, Judah's been fighting to put his shoes on, right? I get to the door. Oh, my goodness, I'm dropping my shirt. No one help me, okay? Because no one's there. You can't even play pretend. It doesn't work that way, okay? So I get to the door, <laughs> and I'm like, Judah's like, I can't tie my shoes. <laughs> You're like. I'm like, just forget about it. Just put them on. I'll tie them in the truck. I'll tie them when you're getting out, right? And he looks at me and he goes, Daddy, why do I have to do everything? That's what I'm talking about. Right, right? No. And then he throws salt in the wound. Thank you for leaving me to the last. <laughs> I literally, I run out to the truck. I throw everything in. I come back. I'm like, okay, come on, Judah. He comes. We get to the school. We make it just on time. You know, we just get there. No one died. Teeth were brushed, no wars, no inter international crisis. Things were averted, but all to say, oh my goodness. Okay. I only mention this, okay? Because you know what? My, my son, my youngest, he's eight, okay? It's probably a little bit of grace, right? He's not 16. If we're doing this when he's 16, well, oh dear. I don't know what's going to happen. Anyways, never mind. That's not going to happen. Praise the Lord. That's not going to happen. Okay. But my point is, is this, okay? 
from Judah's perspective, he's doing everything. Right? He, he is not aware. He is not aware of everything that's already, he's not aware of all the things that mummy does so that there's clean clothes, that they have nice clothes, because dear Lord, if I was the one shopping, you know, they'd wear, they'd wear what they got. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? And you know, all the things that, you know, Michelle has done to make sure that we can pull this off, and then even Michelle's at work, she's like always coaching me, you know, like, remember this, don't forget that, tell the, you know, you got to do this, you got to, and all those things, and then just the implementation so that these kids can get off to school. Now, I don't know about you. How many of you, like, literally, by the time you get to work, you're like, I'm done. <laughs> you're like, I've already had enough. Is it, is it quitting time? I know, it's like, right? You know, because you just, you've, you've had enough. But I realize that, you know what? He's young, he doesn't realize. He doesn't understand all the things that have to happen so that his life can happen the way that it does. Okay? Why do I mention all of this? You know, a house can't really run like this, not at length. It can run a little bit like this, you know, when your kids are young. But when they're going to get older, this isn't how we're going to function anymore. As they mature, that's not how we're going to function. Right? The same thing goes for the church. Okay? The church can't have people going please just tie my shoes. Especially to other people that are carrying 10 different things. Okay? The responsibility of the church needs to be spread out among many people. That is how we are effective and productive in the kingdom of God. Okay? Now, I, I really, I want to unpack this for us because this isn't just an idea that's just, well, hey, People's Church came up with this idea. Not at all. Serving is the heart of God. Serving is straight up in Scripture. Okay? It is why Jesus came. Okay? If you read in, in Matthew chapter 20, and we're going to read it, it's going to be on the screen, we'll read it to you. You see, Jesus is the example of serving. And so, he's actually having this exchange with the disciples, and, and uh, they're He's basically comparing, he's talking about how there's like religious rulers or even political rulers that just, you know, they have authority and you just have to listen to everything that they say. You just have to do, you actually serve, you know, the authorities, you know. And then Jesus is saying this to the disciples and he just reminds them, he's saying, but this isn't the way it is with you, okay? Not so with you, instead, okay? Whoever wants to become great among us must be your servant. You see, the example was, was to make, you know, leadership and, you know, authority meant you made everybody serve you. Everybody did what you said. And everybody just made your life easy. But Jesus is saying, no, not so with us. You know, not so, he's not just saying with himself, because that's, that's not, he's saying not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, I'm not at all trying to take anything away from this passage in that we understand that the major way that Jesus came to serve humanity was that he laid down his life for us. He laid down his life upon the cross. He went to the cross for us. He deals with sin for us. Okay, hands down, we believe that. We still believe that. But I also see something in this passage because Jesus is talking to the people that are in his circle and he's reminding them and he's saying, just the same, you know, I didn't come to be served but actually to serve, okay? And, and to lay down my life for people. And he's saying, this is the same with all of us that all of us are meant to be people who serve. We need to serve our neighbors. We need to serve our coworkers. We need to serve each other, the body of Christ. We need to serve just in our world. Like, wherever you go, be kind where you go. Be life-giving wherever you go. Serve people. Don't, don't wait. He's like, doesn't everyone realize I'm here? I got all dressed up for this right? Like, 
Think about how we present ourselves sometimes when we go places, when we, we want to be noticed, we want to be seen. We want, you know what? We don't need that. We don't have to have that. We're actually, God is wanting to use you as a follower of Christ to serve in our world, okay? So this both goes, you know, in your home, in your, you know, just your sphere of influence, in your workplace, but especially as well in our church, okay? In this body of faith, in, you know, as we're reaching out, we're, we're trying together, like in a group, en masse, trying to serve and reach our neighborhood. We're doing it that way because we see that that's the example of Jesus. Let me just give you another one. In Philippians chapter 2, just, just so that you can have it, you're like, Pastor Tony didn't make this up. I'm just trying to give, you, give it to you straight from his word, okay? So in Philippians chapter 2, so this isn't Jesus talking now. This is Paul. So the message is transferred, right? Jesus sort of was laying out this idea. And then we see, you know, chapters later, time later, that Paul is promoting the exact same type, type of idea. And he's trying to encourage the body, okay? And he's just telling them, if you could be anything, I'll, I'm just going to jump down to this part. When he's just saying, it would make my joy complete that you were being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one mind. If you, you read in you know, different translations, it says if you, that you would have one purpose. You know, we as the body of Christ, we have one purpose. You know, it's to go out that Jesus would be revealed through our life. And how is that done? Because we lay down our life for people. We serve people. We're like, we wonder, you know, like, why is the church not as effective as it used to be? Well, when the church isn't about other people, the church is rendered ineffective. Okay? We start assuming a model that Jesus never, ever told us to walk out. We are never supposed to be as the church that the community comes and serves us, that the community sees us as people, you know, we're high and mighty and we're, you know, important people. Like, it's an institution and it's all of the... No, that's never how it was supposed to be set up. Jesus came, laid down his life, and he's saying the exact... That is the purpose that we should have in common, okay? So like spirit, of one mind. And then it's saying, hear what Paul's saying. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. Like, listen, let's be honest. That is hard to do. We innately think about ourselves the majority of the time. Okay? We don't have to tell ourselves to look out for ourselves. We look out for ourselves. You have to train yourself to look out for other people above yourself. It's going to be a skill you're going to have to learn, right? Does that, does that make sense to everybody? Like serving people is a skill we're going to have to learn because we don't naturally usually gravitate to that. We gravitate to like, you know, I hope I get what I deserve. I hope I get what I want. I hope I get to the, where I want to go. You know, so much of our life, we're thinking about ourselves, our own goals, our own plans, our own agenda, our own selfish ambition, okay? And so we're going to need a shift, okay? So it says, rather in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. And I like this. It says, in your relationships, think about, this is expand. like, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. So in your relationship, what is it saying? It's saying in your relationships, have a mindset of serving. So like we as a church, we're in relationship with each other. We need to have a mindset. If we're going to say we're followers of Christ and we want to be like Jesus, and we're going to have the mind, because I think that some of us, we think, well, I want to be like Jesus. I think that we sort of just sit and we go, well, maybe I want to be holy or I want to be, you know, supernatural or something. I'm not sure exactly for all of us what exactly we, that picture would look like for us. But I want to just say, when you say, I want to be like Jesus, if you really, really want to be like Jesus, you can't divorce servanthood away from it. It's got to be, it's tied into the identity of Jesus. And so if you're saying, like, I want to be a Christ follower, I want to be like Jesus, if I want to have the same mindset or the same attitude as Jesus, well then in my relationships, 
in the, with the people in my world and in my life, I'm going to take on the very same mindset, and this is what it looks like. It describes it. It says, who being in the very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. He took the very nature of a servant. If you want to be like Jesus, you need to, you got to decide and say, hey, my life is going to be about helping other people. Now, I might, I, you, you know, you might be a school teacher, you, you might be a business person, you might, you might be the tax collector, you might be the tax, you know, help you get money back from your taxes, whoever you might be, you might be a preacher, you might be whatever you are, does not matter occupation, career, but I want to just say to each and every one of us, all of our lives need to be about serving. How radical of an idea that Jesus, this is a radical idea. Our culture is not about serving, okay? There's pockets of it, but let's be honest, there's a lot of self-seeking, you know, self-gratification. Enjoy yourself. The, a wealthy life, you know, an easy life. We all want those things, it seems, that our culture is just hitting us again, advertising, putting that before us again and again and again. But you know what? God is relating something that's just countercultural. It's like going, you know, against the stream. It's going against the flow that we are to be people that are servants. And we're to look out for the interests of others. We're not supposed to just be all hung up on ourselves. We're supposed to care for other people. It is like part of being a follower of Jesus. So I got one more verse I want to share with you, and this is in Ephesians chapter 4. And I just love that, you know, hear the wording, okay? Ephesians chapter 4, I'm going to start reading at verse 11, and it says this, so Christ, okay? So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. And, and I want you to hear what it says next. To equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. I just want to just camp out here for a second because when you look historically, the church has gone through really different seasons, okay? Even I've already mentioned some of this, that we go, we've gone through seasons, like, and I'm, I'm talking about just the big C church, okay? I'm talking about, you know, people that would say they're followers of Christ, but there's there are a lot of stripes in that color, okay? There are definitely, and, and, you know, down through history, there have been seasons of time that the church has been just totally politically or power motivated. There's been seasons of time that, you know what, that in the church, everybody in the church serves the leadership, okay? That's not right, okay? Same thing, there's other seasons that I believe we're moving out of where I also think that we as the church sometimes think we've hired, we've hired, say, ministers, we've hired pastoral staff, we've hired church staff. I pay money so that they do ministry, right? And they serve. And there's been different models that have happened down through history that I think, you know, are out of balance. The, the thing that what I see is that we, you know, God has positioned even leaders in the church and Leaders that are serving people, okay? People like apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And serving them how? Serving to equip God's people so that God's people can be serving people, okay? That is the way that it's supposed to lay out, okay? We're, we're all serving one another. We're all learning. We're all growing. We're all at times. We have to get our hands dirty and, you know, fix things or help in things or we all have to give we all have to give of ourselves. we all have to give of our time no one you know it's not about you know some hierarchy or anything like that it's literally when we see the model and you see something why it's so significant is that i hear something when i hear god's word here saying to equip his people for works of service 
This is the part that we want, so that the body of Christ may be built up. You see, here we are as a church, and as we're moving into new seasons and going to new places, the only way, we're not going to do that just because we, you know, we have better worship, you know, a, a better band. We're not going to do that just if I can tell better jokes, okay? We're not, or, or, you know, become some theological star, okay? That's not how it's going to happen. You know, I, I totally believe, how are we, how is the church going to be built up? Both interior-wise, as in like, how are we going to be growing? How are we going to be growing personally? And then also even, how are we going to grow numerically? How are we going to reach people? How is the church going to be built up? Scripture tells us how. It says, when we are equipped and we serve one another. That's when the church functions at its best. That's when the church is its best. And so, all this to say, here we are today, and you know, I'm unashamedly saying this, this is for all of our good. You know, serving is for our good. Even here at church, you know, if you have a toddler or a baby, they're in a great place right now in our church because somebody's serving, right? If you have young children, right now they're being taught about God and they're hanging out in a fun, safe environment because people are serving. Right now, I'm up on that video screen because that person is on a, you know, people are on cameras and because there's a room filled with people, someone's directing, someone's doing PowerPoint, you know, people are running lights, all sorts of things. All of those things are happening. This is happening because people are serving. When you walked in the door and someone shook your hand, that happened because someone is serving, right? When you're going to go out of here and you're going to have coffee, that's because someone is serving, right? We, we, it takes us 90 to 100 people just to run church on Sunday. People are serving. We're be, someone vacuumed in here this week. I was in here earlier. It was messy, okay? All sorts of things happen, and it's not just always because we pay somebody to do it. It's because people serve. Why do we serve? We serve because we're followers of Jesus. I want to challenge us that we don't, you're missing out on something if you, listen, I'm you, I know it's a strong, but you, if you have divorced serving from your Christianity, you need to fix that. You need to tie those back together because you're operating in a model that I don't see described in Scripture. And I want to make sure, I know personally, that I want to live a lifestyle that I see described in Scripture, Right? It, because that's where God is. I believe God is with us when we serve the broken. You know, so many times it's like, well, I want to see Jesus. And, and I, you know, I'm not the first. Many people have said it, but I hear the challenge is true. Is that you want to see Jesus. You see Jesus when you're with the broken. You see Jesus when you're with the hurting. You see Jesus actually when you, you know, even fight your own selfish agenda and you lay down your life and you follow him. That's when you see Jesus. We're, we got to move away, and I know this is countercultural, and I want to challenge us because to me, it's the only way I see us moving ahead. And so it's why it's so important. It's why even, you know, we're trying to create opportunities for people to volunteer and to serve. But you know what? We need more ministries. We don't believe that we've arrived, but you know what? We need people. That, you know what, if God, and I just believe in a church our size, that God is speaking to people. Yeah. And that we need more creative ideas. And we need more creative avenues of ministry. But I want to, I'll be straight up and honest with you. Over the years while I've been in the ministry, I've had so many people, they're like, Pastor, I, can I book a meeting with you? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Okay? And I sit down and I meet with someone and they tell me their great idea and then it's like they leave it with me. Well, Pastor Tony, 
I just, God gave me a great idea, and I just want to drop it off so that you can do it. And, and I've had people at times, they're, they're like offended that I'm like, I just won't run after their dream. And I'm like, it's your dream. Your, your dream resonates with you. I already have too many dreams I'm trying to keep up with that God has already told me. And, and I'm not expecting you to run my dream or, or the thing that God has spoken to me because it doesn't resonate true with you. But it res, you, know, you, you get the picture. But you know what? We do. So I just want to lay out a challenge. We do need, we need more people, more ideas, more ministries. We want to reach out in more creative ways. But don't come and just drop. It doesn't mean that we won't circle around and help each other. But you know what? I'm, understand what I'm saying, okay? We, we need people with a heart that want to serve people, that want to invest in people. This is how we're going to be built up and we're going to grow as a church. When you read that, how it ends in, in Ephesians chapter 4, and just really just simply, it's just, it just describes that this is how we become, you can see it, and become mature. Become mature and attaining to the whole message of the fullness of Christ. You see, when we serve, something happens. We live out the gospel in fullness. And we we grow up okay and so what's the big ask <laughs> couple things as we're moving ahead as a church there are we're going to come back to this a lot of times because you know what we're if we're going to go to new places we're going to have to live in new ways all right but can i ask you just real two simple things today first of all as we grow as a church you know we need to be more open, more receiving, more friendly than we've ever been. Okay? So just on a real simple thing. Where can I start? I want to just say to you that every time that you come into church, take stock of who's around you. Okay? Notice if someone's new. Just, just be willing enough to put yourself out there. Go, that person's probably new. And I don't know about you, when you're in a new environment, aren't you usually a little bit uncomfortable? It's just like, it's, it's, it's fresh, it's like, I don't know anyone. I, I, you know, if you see someone in the foyer, and they're not talking to anybody, and they look alone, be brave enough to go over and say hi. And just say hello, and just say, hey, have we not met before? I'm so-and-so, just glad to meet you. Tell me a little bit about yourself. I know it's us putting ourselves out there, but I just want to just say, we don't realize how important it is, even on that just simple way, just as a beginning point, that we serve each other in this place. Take someone out after church. You know, take a family out for a meal. Invite them to come to your house later in the week. Invest in people. This is just a very simple way that we can serve one another. Don't make it all about me. Well, did I get what I wanted out of church today? Right? That, that should never be our standard. Okay, we should become as like I'm a follower of Christ and God has me on assignment and I am here to serve and help other people around me and God is going to take care of me in the meantime. I want to tell you, I know that looks risky, but I'm telling you, you will be fully taken care of. When we get it's like, well, I'm not learning enough, so I'm not... It's not where we want to start. Start with serving, okay? So just on a practical level. And I want to say this to us, because you know what? Even in our church, I know that we're a friendly church, but we need to help one another, and we still, we still have people that will come here on a Sunday, and they're not fully engaged. You know, no one has really stopped to take some time. And you know, we can't, a couple staff can't do that. It's too many people. Seven, eight hundred people come through on a Sunday. You don't always know. We need to help each other and serve one another. That's one thing. The other thing is this. Is to just actually, after the service, there's coffee being served. We have booths set up for every, like, the ministries, okay, just that are looking for volunteers, okay? We need people to help us run our ministries. Unashamedly, everybody Success for us is everybody involved. 
okay? Not 50%, not 40%. Like, success for us will be everybody serving, okay? Whether that you're making coffee, whether you're on a worship team, whether you're a greeter, you know, whether you're helping us at our connections desk, whether you're helping with kids ministry, whether you're a coach for the sports ministry, whether you're a volunteer at our daycare, whatever it might be, okay? There's, if you're just helping us with all of our special events, oh, it's such a big deal. I want to tell you, we run a number of significant events at our church every year, and sometimes we run them on a shoestring. Like, I'm not, like literally, we ran, I'm just being honest, we ran an event for our community about two weeks ago for the closeout of our sports league with about 10 people, and probably seven of them were our staff. And then probably about five or 600 people here from our community. We can do better than that, okay? We can do way better than that. We have so many opportunities. When we, we, just, we, have, we run a community sports league that we just need people to come and befriend people. You're like, just, we need friendly faces that will come and just take the time to share their lives with people. How are we going to win people? We're going to share our lives and we're going to serve people. Okay? I'm just, I'm just trying to lay it out because there are so many things. Because I know that one of the things is actually to sign up for is just to help us with events. We need help running events. We need people to help serve so that we're not spread too thin and that people have the opportunity to stop and actually talk with people and not just run everything. The only way to do that is to spread the responsibility out. Right? Makes sense? I hope, okay? And uh, uh, so I'm asking as we go out of here that you would join with us and say, you know what, I'm going to help serve. I'm going to find a place of serving, okay? Can't encourage you enough. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Let's bow our heads, and I'm going to pray, and we're going to go, okay? Lord, I thank you for today. God, I thank you for all the exciting things that are happening in and through our church These are great times to be here, great times to see your kingdom advancing. And God, I pray that today, that each one of us would just take stock of ourselves and just say, where's the place that I'm going to serve? What's the role that I'm going to play? How can I help? How can I serve? How can I be part of what your kingdom is just doing here in this place? And, And how can I play a role so that your kingdom will be built up? And so, God, I pray that you will just put this on our hearts today. We won't leave it to everybody else. We'll take stock of ourselves. And so I just pray that you be speaking to us just clearly by your Spirit and directing us today. And I pray this in your name, Jesus. And everybody said, amen Amen and amen. We hope that you enjoyed today's message. And if you don't mind, we would love to hear your story and what God is doing in your life. If you have any questions or comments about anything, please feel free to email us at info at the pc.ca. At Peoples, we are here for you, and we have something for everyone. You can check us out at www.thepc.ca or like us on Facebook. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day.